Okay, so um, you will go to week three and open up lab one. And it has uh, all of this stuff here. Okay, so you've got two, um, well, not two, uh, you've got a few parts to this, okay? So uh, part one is using the R program to do some calculations from the textbook okay so you'll you'll kind of do um, find answers from textbook problems using the art program and I think uh, you know once you get the hang of it it'll be like oh that's kind of neat okay and then the other part is we are going to look at some data from the uh, World Health Organization and uh, and create some uh, histograms and stuff okay all right um, so this is a uh, so R is a program and uh, and it's available for free you just need either a Mac a PC or a Linux machine it, it will not run if you've got a Chromebook or it's not gonna run on your iPad so you need a computer okay so um, so you just go to Google you say I want R okay the first thing that it should hit is the R project for statistical computing, this is what you're going to download. So you're going to go there. R project for statistical computing. You go right up here in the top corner where it says download. And you're going to click CRAN. Okay. And then it says, where do you want to download from? Um, probably someplace in the USA. You can download from uh, UCLA or any of these other things, Berkeley, so I usually go to the UCLA one, because why not? Um, and then, you know, to download the one according to your uh, computer, right? So for Windows, you'd get this thing. For uh, Mac, you'd get, uh, you know, just one of these packages here, okay? And then you'd install that on your computer. So first thing you need to do is download and install R, okay? I like to, uh, I recommend downloading and installing something called RStudio. Okay, so you type in RStudio and, um, and you'd go to that site and you'd click download RStudio. Okay, so what RStudio is, is it's a um, uh, it's an IDE, which is an integrated development environment that sits on top of R. So you need to install base R, okay? And when you install base R, it's going to look something like this, okay? It's not, not that exciting. Um, it looks like this, but you can do the calculations. This is regular base R, okay? What um, R Studio is, is it sits on top of that and... Uh, let me uh, let me restart my R Studio here. Um, it it basically just adds some uh, some nice features that you know are, make it a little bit uh, easier to do um, do work in R. So it, it you know it keeps track of your variables. It keeps track of a bunch of stuff for you. Um, so R Studio is a nice thing. That, uh, that sits on top of R. But you need to install R first, okay? And then you can uh, install R Studio, and I, I, I recommend it. Um, the only, I guess the only time I, where R Studio might not work is if your computer is like really old, meaning it's like over eight years old or something like that, then, um, then maybe, uh, then there's a possibility that R Studio won't won't run, okay? Um, but, you know. Uh, okay, so let's, um, so this is, when you start up R Studio, it's gonna look something like this. There's just kinda like some legal information, not really, it just says uh, it doesn't come with any warranty, but it's free and, and all of this, okay? And then you can go into uh, R Studio and do some basic calculations. You can say like, what's five plus eight? And it says, okay, your answer is 13, okay? 
And you get this uh, bracket 1 because um, R is meant to, uh, to handle um, lots of data because it's a statistical program here. And so a lot of times your responses will have hundreds of answers, like hundreds of pieces to it, and, um, and this will index them. So, you know, for example, if I say, you know, I'm just going to stick in a... Um, stick in a command where it's spitting back 120 numbers. Here it's saying, okay, the first, uh, first answer is this, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then uh, the sixth, you know, sixth answer starts here. You know, this one is the 86th, and this is the 116th, or something like that. So that's what these, these brackets on the side uh, represent, okay? Um, okay, so you, you can use it for calculations. You can do like, you know, five times eight, you know, what's four raised to the third power, all of these, all of these things, okay? Um, we can use it to calculate normal probabilities and binomial probabilities, okay? So um, for normal probabilities, the command you'd use is p norm, okay? This is, this is the same as looking up a z-score and getting back the area, okay? So p norm is you give it, you're basically giving it a z-score or a way to get a z-score, and you're asking, give me back the area, okay? So p norm of 0, this says I'm looking up z-score equal to 0, z equal to 0, what is the area shaded to the left? So if I hit enter, what is p norm 0 going to say? It's going to say 0.5, okay? Because I've looked up z equal to 0, it's going to say the area to the left is 0.5, okay? If I say p norm um, 1.5, okay, you know, you can compare this to uh, looking it up in your z table, p norm 1.5, if, uh, if I go to the Z table and I go to 1.5, it says 0.9332. R says, actually, it's 0.9331928. Um, so, you know, uh, the, the built-in Z in uh, um, Z system in R is, is more precise, okay? Um, you can also, rather than saying P norm 1.5, you can say, um, a man is 74.5 inches tall, the mean is 70, and the standard deviation is 3, okay? So this, this person has a z-score of 1.5, right? At 74.5 with a mean of 70 and standard deviation of 3, this person has a z-score of 1.5. So our answer would be the equivalent of looking up uh, p-norm 1.5, okay? Anytime you're, you're like, how did you know what to type? Okay, well, it's because I've used R. Um, but you can always do a question mark, which says, I've got questions about this command p norm. Okay? And then it will pop up over here in the help. Okay? If you are uh, using regular R and you do this, okay, it'll, it'll be the same type of thing. You know, p norm 1.5, oops, gives you the same answer. You can ask p norm. Uh, question mark p norm and then it opens up uh, in your web browser. Okay, but R Studio has it uh, built in and it shows up in its convenient location. Yes, question. You're in R Studio. You're not in R. Yeah, this is R Studio, and then this is Basic R. Okay. So do you need both of them open? You don't need both of them open. Okay. You um, you need to have R installed before you can install R Studio because it's going to look for uh, R to kind of run the engine, but R Studio is just kind of like adding some nice, nice features to to make it pretty, right? Um, but the the base workhorse is is R, and you can you can use it. And sometimes I like to use plain old regular R if I'm if I just need to do a quick few quick calculations very quickly because um, R loads faster by itself just because it's the base engine and and you just start it, it loads up like instantly. Our studio will sometimes take just a few seconds to load and I don't know, we're in a generation where a few seconds are like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to watch this YouTube video. <laughs> um, 
So, so we have this, okay? So uh, this is P norm, um, and you can you can see, okay, you're gonna it's gonna ask for uh, you know something, and it's if you don't specify it, it, it's assuming mean is zero and standard deviation one, which is our standard normal, okay? And um, with P norm, you can also just do 74.5. Uh, comma 70 comma 3 okay and it will give us the same answer because it's expecting um, it's expecting the parameters or arguments in this order it's expecting the mean second and expecting the standard deviation to be third okay but you can you know you can shuffle them around and stuff um, on the other side you can um, do Q norm. So Q norm is you're giving it the area and you're saying what's the z-score that corresponds to this area. So Q norm of 0.5 would be what? Would be 0. Okay. Q norm of 0.9332 would be yeah 1.5 or you know because I have it's slightly off, it, it'll say it's not exactly 1.5, it's 1.5056 or something like that, okay? So here, with Q norm, you give it the area and it gives you back the z-score. Is that okay? All right, and then for the binomial one, the function is d binome, okay? d binome, and you say I want 10 successes, I'm doing 20 trials, and the probability of a success is 0.5. So this is the equivalent of saying, if I flip a coin 20 times, and the probability it lands heads is 0.5 each time, what's the probability that it's going to land heads exactly 10 times? And that's d binome 10, comma 20, comma 0.5. Okay, Th this is all being recorded also if you, if you guys need to uh, review this and watch it again. Um, and so this is the neat thing. With R, you can, um, a lot of these functions, you can give it multiple inputs. And so, so uh, I can say, you know, what's the probability that I get 10 or more heads, right? So I can, there's a shorthand to say, give me all the numbers between 10 and 20, which is 10 colon 20. This will give me all the numbers from 10 to 20, okay? And then so I can say d binome 10 colon 20. So give me all of the answers if I gave you 10, 11, 12, all the way up through 20, uh, with 20 trials and the probability of success each trial is 0.5, okay? So what this is gonna give me back is it's going to give me back 11 answers. It's going to say, um, what's the probability that you get 10 successes? That's 0 0.17619711, OK? It gives it back to me in scientific notation. So don't, don't get thrown off by this, OK? This says 1.76 e minus 0, 01, OK? What e minus 0, 01 means basically means move the decimal one spot over to the left. So 1.76, if I move the decimal over one spot to the left, I get 0.176. All right. OK, if I flip the coin 11 times, what's the prob um, I'm sorry, what's the probability I get 11 heads out of 20 coin flips? That's 1.6e minus 1. So that's basically 0.16. All right. And I can verify this. I could say. I can get it directly. I can say d binome 11, and it's going to be this answer, OK? And so this is basically d binome 12, d binome 13, d binome 14, d binome 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, OK? So where it would be very tedious for us to do these calculations by hand, it doesn't take r even a f second to do these calculations, OK? And then so if I ask the question, what is the probability of getting at least 10 heads out of, you know, if I flip the coin 20 times, what's the probability I get at least 
10 heads. Well, that would be the summation of all of these things, right? I would add all of these together because this is 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 20. I would add these together, okay? So I'm gonna take d binome 10 through here, and then I'm gonna put this inside a function that says sum, which says basically take everything that's on the inside and add them all up together. So I'm gonna say sum this, and I get 0.588. So if you flip the coin 20 times, what's the probability you get at least 10 heads? Here it says 0 0.588. How are we feeling? Is this feeling okay? I don't have, uh, I, I know, you know, the first time you work with a computer program or programming language, it's gonna, you're gonna have some headaches. And that's because you're not used to um, talking to a computer like this, okay? Um, and the computer is very, very uh, picky. So, you know, if, if you uh, accidentally have an extra comma in here, okay, it'll probably complain, okay? It'll give you an error. It'll say, error in this, it, uh, blah, 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 you know, like, I don't know what you're talking about, okay? Um, you know, you, you, you put a space between the, you know, like, I, nobody does this, but you know, if you do this, it's going to say, uh, unexpected this. You know, you're, it's going to give you errors if you've got little typos, right? Uh, a common thing is leaving off a closing, um, closing parentheses, okay? Uh, and in that case, it says you're going to get a plus, and then you're like, wait, what, what's going on here? Um, it's saying I'm expecting more input because you started off this sum and uh, I'm expecting more numbers to appear here or something, you know? It, it's, so you have to uh, close it off. Or, so a lot of times, you know, if you get a plus here, this means I'm expecting more input. Here, uh, this little, um, I don't know, arrow tip, this is like saying um, I'm ready for you to give me input, okay? So this is using um, R as a calculator for some of these things. I think, uh, um, so you have some exercises and I think you'll, you'll see that's kind, kind of neat. Um, and, and lastly, the, there's P binome, which basically is like D binome, sum of D binome from zero to whatever. Okay, so, so P binome nine, 20.5, this says, if I flip the coin 20 times, every time I flip it, I have a probability of 0.5, and I have p binome 9, that means what is the probability that I get anywhere from 0 to 9 heads? Okay. Do we know what this is going to be? Looking at the other outcome. So we have sum of d binome 10 through 20 equal to 0.588. So p binome is going to be 1 minus the other answer, so I'm going to get 0. Uh, 4, 4.412, Okay. And, uh, you know, let me see if I can find the, uh, that uh, binomial distribution app. So the, uh, the diagram is, uh, if I flip the coin 10 times, basically 0.588 is if I go from uh, 4.5 to 10, okay? So the area to the right over here is uh, 0.588, and then the area to the left would be 0.4119. Although this is not giving me the uh, end. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. N is twenty, and uh, and I, yeah, this is this is why I'm like, what what's going on? Nine point five to twenty. Yes, yes. Okay, so there everything lines up. So the area to the right is um, 0.588. Okay, so that's from ten to twenty, and then p binome nine basically means everything from zero to nine. 
Okay, and that's why everything uh, these these two add up. Does that make sense? So p binome always goes from zero to nine, or, or not zero to nine, zero to whatever number you put in. Okay, so if you want, you know, what's the probability of getting thirteen or more? One way to answer that would be to do d binome thirteen through whatever, and then sum those up, or you can do one minus p binome up through twelve. And what's remaining will be 13 or more. Is that, is that too complicated? or? Um, so, by myself, it will be. <laughs> by yourself, it will be. OK. Well, you can, um, uh, all right. Well, I, I think when you, when you try it out, the homework, it, it, will, uh, it will be OK. All right, and uh, and if if you if you're experiencing um, you know questions or whatnot, just or problems, just s send me an email. Send me some questions. I'll I'll try to get back to you and uh, in a timely manner here. Um, all right, let's let's talk about using R for you know what what I think is the uh, is it's great power, which is analyzing data. Okay, so here uh, I'm, I'm have a a URL here, and I. Uh, I hope it still works. Sometimes you have URLs and they break, right? So this is from the World Health Organization. Oh, please, uh, please work. Mm, let me see. Okay. All right, so there's a possibility that they've changed something with their... OK, well, it's working now. OK, so and then uh, when you do it, it's going to offer you to save a, uh, a t data file, a CSV. And then so what's going on? OK, I want to save this. All right. And, uh, and then we can load this into R, OK? So I'm going to, uh, there, where is it? OK. So I'm going to load this into R using uh, this uh, this thing, okay? And so um, the default settings um, generally work pretty well, and uh, and the name you're going to want to rename it to something simple. So this is a blood pressure data set. So I'm going to just name it. To BP, okay. So uh, again, that's uh, that's done by going to import data set from text file, and then you would uh, navigate to the file, okay. Or you can even do from web URL, and you might be able to just paste this URL directly in there. Actually, let's see if this works. Oh yeah, look at that. And, and it works, OK? And then so again, you, you would just rename it uh, something simple. And so this is uh, BP2. All right. So anyway, um, so I've got this. Uh, we look at this, and it, it says, OK, the indicator that we're looking at is mean systolic blood pressure. So this data is from the World Health Organization. They've gone through all of these different countries, nations. And this gather was gathered in the year 2010. So it says, in Canada, which belongs to uh, the region Americas, the mean systolic blood pressure in Canada for uh, both sexes, 18 years and over, is 116.6. Um, and it gives it kind of, you know, it says with a margin of error, basically. So the true value could be anywhere from 114.1 to 119.5. Okay, so we'll just take this this middle number one sixteen point six and do some analysis on these. Okay, and then you know it has it split up for between females and males and uh, and both sexes and, and whatnot. Okay. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look at this. So we've got um, our BP data set, and uh, and we can reference things. Okay, so I can say you know BP dollar sign. Um, which means uh, this is how you indicate which column you want. And, and RStudio automatically brings up the names of the columns. So I can say BP dollar sign numeric, which means look at the numeric column here. Okay. And if I hit enter, it spits out a whole bunch of stuff. 
it gives me all 582 observations, okay? So it says the first one is 113, the next one is 113.2, etc., 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 and 113 is the uh, mean systolic blood pressure of females in the Republic of Korea, and 113.2 is the mean systolic blood pressure of females 18 and older in Canada, okay? And so that's what we have, all right? But here it's just taking all of this, and then, you know, you want to find, uh, find something like the mean of all of these values. So we're going to say, you know, give me the mean of BP dollar sign numeric, okay? So it's going to say we want to take the mean of all, all of these numbers here, okay? And when I do that, it says NA. Why is it giving me NA? What do, well, NA means this, this is a missing value, okay? So looking at BP dollar sign numeric, we have a whole bunch of numbers but we also have one, two, three, four, five, six missing values, okay? And so we're asking R, give me the mean of all of these numbers. And it says, uh, you're missing six values, so the mean, I can't tell you the mean, right? Um, because, well, you know, if I said, you know, um, my friend has uh, three children, the ages of his three kids, or the ages of the kids are, two and seven and I forget how old the third one is um, and I say what's the average age of the three kids you wouldn't say it's you know two plus seven over two isn't four and a half you know that's the average of the ones that I've given you but because that third age is missing you don't know what the average age is okay and that's basically what R is saying saying oh, you got some missing values here I can't give you the average so you have to explicitly tell R, you know what, I know I'm missing some values. Just pretend like they don't exist, okay? So we say na.rm equals true. And this is a, so, you know, comma, this is an optional argument which says, hey, you know what, I'm missing some things, so the missing values, the na's, rm basically remove them, okay? And we say, do that equal to true. All right, and so R will understand if you just use the letter capital T, but I recommend always typing out true in all caps because you can reassign the value T to different things, and, uh, and that can mess you up if you, um, if you do later calculations. So I, I, I always recommend using true, using all caps, capital T R U E and then if you write code you should avoid naming things uh, with the letter T just because uh, or F because those are often used as proxies for true and false so um, okay so anyway we have this we can uh, create you know charts we can ask for a histogram of all of these things okay and here's the histogram of all of our uh, blood pressures that, that exist. And you can also um, create little options here. For uh, numeric, you can say, uh, you can do breaks equals 20, or you know, add, add more breaks, and this kind of adds a little bit more, um, more spacing here or something, okay? On the, uh, on the histogram, you can increase the number of breaks. Stuff like that. We can also uh, filter or subset the data. Okay, so let's say you wanted to do an analysis just on Canada. Okay, and you or not even maybe not analysis. You just want to know the values that are associated with Canada. Okay, we can run the subset command, which says subset a data set, and we're going to do subset BP. And what we want to do is we want a subset where country is equal to Canada, okay? And so, uh, so here it says, oh, I've found three rows that, that belong to Canada. Okay, and notice what I've written. I've written country, so I'm re referencing a column in the data set, country, and it has to be spelled exactly the way it is, and it's case sensitive. If I have 
country with a lower C, it's going to say, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay? Uh, so it has to be exactly the way it's written in the, uh, the data set, the column, um, column titles. And then notice when I want to specify as Canada, I have to put Canada in quotes because it's saying, here is, this is a text string. I want you to match it, okay? And then I have a double equals, okay? Because single equals is used for assignment. It's used to say, hey, I want you to set this value equal to something. Double equals is a test for equality. It's we're saying, is country equal to Canada? If it is, I want, it and I want you to subset that. If it's not, ignore it. Okay, so we get male, both sexes, female um, for this, okay? So country equal to Canada. Um, if you want it, so with this, this is not um, very useful in of itself, so we can store this, okay? And so I'm going to just create something called can, okay? And I'm using this uh, little arrow. I could use an equal sign to say I want can to be equal to this. But basically, I'm going to say take the output of subset and store it into uh, a new variable or new object called can, okay? Whoops. Oh, this is, this is my bad command with lowercase country. Okay, and so here now I have Canada, and this is just the three rows of Canada, okay? And then so now we can look and say, oh, you know, males have a mean systolic blood pressure of 120, whereas the females have a mean systolic blood pressure of 113.2. So overall, both sexes have a combined systolic blood pressure of 116.6 or something like that. Um, so, part of your lab is to uh, load this data, and uh, whoops, um, I ask you to uh, create some subset, okay, uh, for some of the different regions based on the uh, World Health Organization regions, and create little uh, histograms for for each of those. Uh, when you uh, to create your lab report, okay, I want you to um, make a, you know, I want you to answer these questions and, and put, your, put your responses in, in, a, in a Word document, okay? Or, or some kind of document, okay? And so um, to get your graphs from our studio into Word, it's quite easy. You click this, when you, where you have the graphs, you're going to click Export. And, uh, and you can do any of these, but I just like to do Copy to Clipboard. It makes it in my opinion, easy. You do copy to clipboard, and you click copy plot, and you come back over here, and then you just paste it into Word, okay? And then you do something like, uh, you know, this is a histogram, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right, to, to answer the questions, right, uh, that, are, that are part of the lab. Okay, um, I recommend, uh, not waiting until Wednesday of next week to get started on this because uh, there's a chance that you'll run into some kind of problem and um, and I would say if you get started on Wednesday you're probably you're probably gonna be a little bit sad so <laughs> okay it's it's um, it's meant to be a little bit challenging but it's not meant to be um, super super hard or impossible okay so if you're just finding yourself getting stuck and you don't know how to proceed, um, don't, don't yell at the computer. You can, uh, you can send me an email, and, uh, and I'll try to, try to help you out, okay? All right, uh, we'll end there, and uh, have, a good, have a good week.